The Gemara in Shabbos, the famous Gemara in Shabbos, the Gemara in Shabbos, the Flamid Bey, says as follows. Amr Rabbi Yitzchak, Bereid Rabbi Yehuda, L'Oilom Yivake Shrachmim Shlo Yichla. A person, in every circumstance, L'Oilom means in every situation, a person should ask mercy, compassion, or Kodesh Baruch that he should not get sick. Why? She'im Yechla, because a person gets sick first, so Oymrim Loi, they tell him, Havei Zuchus Vipater. Now you have to bring Zuchus in order to be healed. The concept is, and it's a concept throughout Shas, and uh, we see this in reality, it's a clever Pashat, that preventive medicine is much easier than uh, correction, than healing, they're bringing repairing, they're bringing something back. So a person should daven shal yichla, rather than wait until he becomes a chayla, and then he has to bring a zuchos, he needs more merit, he needs something additional, and then to have a refuah from that. You see this in relationships also, much harder to repair a relationship than to uh, prevent a relationship from falling apart. Keeping a relationship going is much easier than repairing a relationship, even correcting, even sorry, creating a relationship from the beginning is easier than repairing a relationship. And you see this in, in really all areas, in building, construction, you see this in the, the Gemara and Rosh Hashanah, that a person, a person needs less zuchusim than Acha Gzardin. In order to change the Gzardin, you need so much more. You see that in the easier, by the way, Shalot Tefta, a person shouldn't sin, much easier to conquer the Taiva at the lowest end than to sin and to repair that and to break the Taivas after you build the Taivas up. It's a double portion. Bechala Tarakula, Rabbi Yisuf Engel, and Asim Daraisa has a whole chapter, has a whole parak talking about this in Kabbalah Kremers, in all different areas, that easier to get, to stop something from happening than to repair it or correct it from happening. So have a kasha at Sumo, Tzarechi and God on this. The Rishalmi in Yuma, famous Rishalmi, Rishalmi says, Kol Dar, every generation, Shlo Nivna Biyoma, that wasn't built in its days, the Beis Samikdash, is Maila Olav, Akash Baruch Hu considers it, Ki Ilo as if uh, we destroyed the Beis HaMikdash in that generation. Now, uh, think about the mathematics over here. It sounds like the measure that a, of a Venus of Chotayim that was Machria, that determined to destroy the Beis HaMikdash, whatever that level is, let's call it over the 50% mark. Over the 50, that's an arbitrary number. Over the 50% mark, that you needed to be mocked with the base of Mikdash. So now I have less chusim, less merits than chayv, than liabilities. And if I keep that, if I have that same thing right now, that is a reason that the base of Mikdash will be destroyed. It's, it's a pella. Because the pashtus is, you need more zuchusim to rebuild the base of Mikdash than to prevent it to be destroyed. You need more Averis to, uh, to destroy the base of Mikdash, so to say, than to, than to have it in a situation of rebuild. The measures don't work. The mathematics don't work over here. If obviously a person needs way more to rebuild the base of Mikdash than for the base of Mikdash to get destroyed. So it could be, if you think about it, maybe, perhaps, we're on a greater level than the door of the Machrivei Beis HaMikdash, than the door of Bayes Rish and door of Bayes Shedi. Maybe we're on a greater level. But we don't have enough to Zuchusim, we don't have enough Beres to rebuild the Beis HaMikdash. That's not considered to be destroyed in our times. It could be if the Beis HaMikdash would be here today, be Amenu. So we're not on the level that it would be destroyed. But we surely don't have enough Zuchusim in order to rebuild it. Because rebuilding is much harsher, harder than preventive. So the, the, the Rishami, it's hard to understand this Rishami. And what's the point of this Rishami? So I, I think as follows. 
different approach. Rashi, a few times, but Rashi and Parashat the Pude, Rashi brings the Pekudim, Eil Pekude at Mishkan, Mishkan at Edis, Asher Pukan at Pimosha, and that Rashi points out, Hazal, that it says Mishkan twice. Eil Pekude at Mishkan, Mishkan at Edis. Rashi says, Shnei Pa'amin, Shnei Pa'amin twice. Rem is a Mikdash, it's an allusion to the Mikdash. That was taken as a security, as a mashkin, for the various of Kali Yisrael. Rashi is saying the word Mishkin alludes to the word mashkin. That the Mishkin became a mashkin, like on a chayv, on a halvah, there's something called a security, a surety. It became a security for the various of Klai Yisrael. That's what Rashi says. So it's a, first of all, it's a pella that the, the word Mishkin itself is used for the time of the Chorbin at the time of the Binyan. Right at the Binyan of the base of Mikdash, at the Mishkin, at least the Mishkin in, in the Midbar, it alludes right there to a word that defines the Mishkin as a Mashkin, as something which is going to happen with Chorbana. Why at the time of the Simcha were you talking about the Chorbin right away? That's number one. Number two is, I thought, that the word Mishkin comes from the Shevish Sheikhin, Shin Chofnuh, which means to reside or to, to be settled on something, the Shechina Sheikhin be Mishkin. You also have the Shechem, the shoulders, carry something, shuna is the area of inhabitants of a, of a shikun, of holding something, and, and, and you have quite a few other words, shachav is the same idea, it's the same root of shimchav, ratak, and sefer, he says that, uh, that uh, shoroshim, his sefer shoroshim, shoroshim built on many times two letters. So you have the shach, and shachav, shachem, mishkin, shechina, I would have said what mashkain comes from the Shevish Hemshech, to be mashach, to, to be pulled, to be drawn someplace else. If I want to carry something, I'll be mashach. A mashkin is something which is taken out of my rishus, the rishus of the leva, into the rishus of the malva. And he's holding it over there. So it, I thought it'd be a Russian mashkin. Not a Russian of uh, Shochav, not a Russian of Shochem. If that's the case, so then what's this allusion to? It's two different words. It might sound the same, but it's two different words. But take the question a little further. In Parashat Balak, we have something similar. Bilam wanted to curse Klai Yisrael, instead he gave a bracha. Matevo Alecha Yaakov. Mishkin Osecha Yisrael. Comes Rashi. What's Mishkin Osecha Yisrael? So Rashi says, Matevu O'alecha. And Oyel sounds like a Dova Roy, a tent. Matevu O'alecha is Matev Oyel Shilai Ubeis Olamim Bishuvan. It's talking about Beishilai, the Mishkan, once they got there to Yisrael, where Bishuvan. When it was inhabited, you know, when it was erected. Shemakrivim behem karbonus lechaper leim. Matayvo alecha. This is a kapara for Kla Yisrael in the in the Beis Shiloi. Mishkin Yisrael Yisrael. Rashi says af shkeshehim chreven. Mishkin alludes to chorbe. Hell of a thing. The word Mishkin alludes to a time of Chorbin, after Chorbano. Lefisha hein mashkin aleim. Because again, it's a security. It's a collateral. Aleim. The Chorbano kapara ala nefashas. And the Chorbin of Bayesrishin Bayesheni becomes a kapara on the nefashas of Kalani. So that itself is a kapara. And Shenema, the Pasuk that we've been saying, 
Kol Hashem is Chamosai, and what that Kashbaruch Hu bring out his Chema, Vayetz is Eish B'Tzion. So he destroyed the base of Mikdash. So here also you see that Rashi brings the word Mishkin as a Mashkin, and the Tevo Ha'alecha Yaakov Mishkin HaSech Yisrael is that the Mashkin B'Sha'af B'Sha'az Chabana. But it's a Pella. How is it a Kapara? What does it mean it's a Kapara on the Averis of Yisrael? Take it as a Mashkin, a Kapara on the Averis of Yisrael B'Chabana. What, what, what Kufa are we talking about? Are we talking about the Kufa of the Chorban Abayis? So now what about after Kufa? Thousand years later, two thousand years later. What about the seventy years between the Beis HaMikdash? Ma Taivu Alecha Yaakov Mishkan Osech Yisrael Sounds like the Taiv has to be here. Action, action. Not just then. The Taiv is Dover Tamidi. The Luchas Rishonim were broken because it didn't have a, the test of Taif. There was no Taif there. Taif has to be Mayalakim as Archi Taif. It's Kavu, it's Taif. It's Lol Mayad. I would think the Pasuk, Ma Taivu Alecha Yaakov, Mishkan Asecha Yisrael means Rashi thinks there's a Kapar for Kaisal in every situation. In the Ayal, when it's been Shuvan, and in the Beis Hamikdash, when it's been Korbanah. But the the the, the, the was there. How is that nimshach? Elamai, it's the mashkin. But what does that mean? How is the mashkin a kapara on the very supply you saw? It's something to think about. Another shy that's fascinating is that normally Yaakov is when Klai you saw the time of Enoch in the the time of Golis and the hardships. Yisrael, that word of Yisrael, when Klai Yisrael is defined as Yisrael, is Mansha Aisim and Tzashmak in the good times, in the Gula, with Ashra Sashina. It would have, should have said maybe Matayvu or Alecha Yisrael, Mishkan Asecha Yankov. Because Ayal is talking about Yeshuva. Mikdash is talking about Akko Korbala. And over here it's Mamash Fakat. You see, Matayvu or Alecha Yankov. Mishkan Asecha Yisrael. Very hard to understand. But you see, again, Rashi calls it, it's a mashkin. So I think as follows. Rabbeinu Bachai says in Parashat Pekudai, he right away says that the word, is obviously bothered by this, and he says the word mash, mishkan comes from the word mashkin. Itaka comes from the word lahamsha. And why is that? He says it's a hamshacha, the whole mishkin in this world. You know, in this is, is a mishicha, hamshacha, is a, is a connection, is a movement, is drawn from what? From the mishkin lamaila. So he says the mishkin, the caliph, tziur, and the dugma is the mikdash lamaila. Ki beis hamikdash shel mata is meishich kayach mi mikdash shemayla. The hamshach it draws the kayach, its ability, its power, its ruchni, its kedusha from the mishkin shel mayla. So the word mishkin really means lahamshich. And what does it mean lahamshich? The shechina. So the shechina that shaykh in the mayla. That the uh, Hashem, the 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 the, 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 the Kisei Shemayla, is the, there. It's being nimshach. Is being drawn now that the Shechina is over here in the Mishkin. But really, it's one root word. So what, what what's the concept? The Habshachas of what we call a Sheichin the Mokam to another area to another Zman in High Alma. What does that mean? I think it means as follows. What is a mashkin? A mashkin belongs to the liver. It's something that he owns, and by etzim, it's something he needs. He gives it as a security, as a collateral for a loan. What does he give for a loan? I mean, he borrowed $100,000. He gives a mashkin that's worth 
let's say at least a hundred thousand dollars. And now at the time when the Havah is over, he has the Zman Piran, he has a choice. You pay for it, you negotiate to extend it, or you end up giving it out. If it's some, he doesn't have the money, what is he trying to do? He's trying to raise the money, get the money to pay the loan to get his mashkin back. If it's something which is not valuable to him, it's not necessary to him, so just leave the, leave the mashkin by the malva. Just leave it there. Use it as the piroin. It's shava kesef. Go sell it. Why bother borrowing? Go sell it and use the money to begin with. Elamai, the whole concept of a mashkin is something which is important to me, that I want, that I need. And I'm using that to get something else, to get kesef, in order to use that kesef. But I want my mashkin back. I need my mashkin. It's something called a dava hef but it's not a mice, it's not added, it's not extra money. It, a mashkin will say different. A mashkin is not a shava kesef. It's not kesef and shava kesef. A mashkin is the chetif, I need that chetif. It's a double half chetif. And that's what I give to the, to the malva in order to, to secure the loan yeah, that I need. When a Kaddish Baruch who's telling us at the outset of the Binyan HaMishkin, at the outset of the Binyan HaBeis HaMikdash, is that it belongs to the Leiva, it belongs to us. It's not on loan to us. It's not, it's a Matana Gemurah. It's owned by us. And nobody, but nobody, has the right to take it away. Even a Kaddish Baruch Hu is not taking it away from us because it's ours. I don't want to say it's not his, but it's ours. He gave it to us. And what happens? One day we might not deserve the base of Mikdash. One day we have a Chayv. One day we have to pay up the Chayv. It's not Shav Kesef. It's not something which you can pay up a chayv with. You can't pay up a chayv with the base of mikdash, because it's ours and it's hechul to us. It's the hein chayenu. It's called base chayenu. It's our life. It's our essence. It's our kedusha. It's who we are. It's where the shechina comes with Simpson to us in a very concentrated way, and it can never be taken away from us. With all the various, with all the Gila Rai Shvichas Domin, with all the Ritzicha, that's the Shvichas Domin, Avada Zara, with all the Sinas Chino, Beis Hamikdash is ours. But what? We have a Chayv to our Kaddish Baruch. We owe, we have to do Tshuva. We have to change. The best our Kaddish Baruch could do is take the base of Mikdash as a mashkin from us. Hold it. Withhold it, it's a collateral until we do tshuva. Or until the chasta HaKadosh Baruch Hu returns the base of Mikdash no matter what. But it's not going to be destroyed. Chorben, by the way, doesn't mean destruction. Chorben means to dissemble. It's the same ISIS of Chibur. Chibur means to connect. Chore means to disconnect. It is, it's a disconnection. It's a removal from us. What happened is that the Shechina was nimshach milmaila lemata. Now the Shechina goes back up milmata lemaila. Back to the Mikdash lemaila. And that's where it's holding. That's where it is. But it's a mish, it's a mashkin for us to, to get back the Shechina from above back down here. And Bimela, so once you have that, that it's, it's such a mashkin, and, and, and you just have to know, there's a chus of Klai Yisrael. Before we go there, there's a chus of Klai Yisrael. What happened in Midbar? You know, in the Midbar was uh, in Eretz, Moz Rua, who knows? We had to live there and with a tremendous midah of Amunah Bitochem. 
There was no food, there's no water. It's, it's, not a, it's not an area that a person could live in, surely not for 40 years. It's not a place of life. That's why a person Holchim Barrios will make a, a bracha, because uh, he's Tzarek Lahaydas. It's not a place of that. Well, what ha- we don't know, we know there's going to be a Muhammad to get into Eretz Yisrael. With the Laman Al-Fulach. We know so many different things are going to happen. You know, when a person knows that, bad times, hard times, a person holds back his assets at that time. You know, today in, you know, in this world economy, people are holding on to their assets. Because you don't know what's going to be tomorrow. What happens is a mitzvah to build a Mishkin. And Klai Yishok is all the Kesef is of, to the point that there's more than enough. Why? Hold on. Or, or at least make calculations. You know, make your stuck in calculations at the time. Why all? The daim told, told Moshe had to say enough. The answer is because more than the Kesef is of, more than the Eichel, more than anything else in the world, it's Hechreichi. I need the Mishkin more than I need the money. I need the Mishkin more than I need the food. I need the Mishkin more than I need anything else. I need the Mishkin more than I need security. I need the Mishkin. It's a double half rating. Comes our Kaddish Baruch who says, you need the Mishkin so much. That's your feelings. That's the reality. The, it's a, it becomes a Mashkin, but not the Piroin of the Hava. It's not the Shavu Kesef, it's not the Kesef. It's the Mashkin. And that Mashkin is a place of connection between Kla Yisrael and HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Makkah of HaShuah Sashchina. So now, what happens is, Burchabana, the Mishkin, is the Dayin Sham. The Shechina is still there, in the Makkah Mastara, in the Milo. But it's being piled all the time. What happens, we'll get it back when we pay back the chayv. If that's the case, Yerushalmi is gewaltig. Yerushalmi says, you don't need Muzah Chusim to bring back the Mishkan, to bring back the Mesa Mikdash. It's a Piran HaChayv. Uh, interest is also. You don't have to pay more. You just pay the chayv, you got back the Mishkan. Because it was taken as a Mashkin. Unlike that the Adam is power Adam, because if he comes sick, what happens is Yovaz Chos. Over here we don't say that. We don't say it's harder to repair a relationship uh, or anything than to create it. It's not. Over here it's not. Because all it is is a Pirana Chayv. It's there. It's there, but talk fight. It doesn't need a binyan chadasha. It just needs the shkin to come back down. And not only that, but because Baruch Hu Bechasto brings it down with the, the binyan itself, with the eish. But it's the shkin of Shabbat that takes all the meetings. But still, how is it mechaper afil berchobana? I understand now it's a mashkin. You understand why right at the beginning of El Bukudi and Mishkin, it tells me about the Mashkin, because it's ours. Because it's Dova Hechreichi. But how is it Machaper? When it's above and it's not here, just like when it's Machaper when it is here. It's still hard to know. And you understand the Kabbalists are going on in Mishkin Shom Maila. You know, it's still what we say by Ritzay. But how, how is it Pyre? So I, I, I think as follows. Without getting involved into Talmud Torah, you know, the Limna Torah Shabbat, but there's a famous Gemara a few places in Shah, some of Yitzchok, that the Baal Chayv is kind of Mashkin. The Baal Chayv, you know, the Malva owns the Mashkin. What does that mean, the Baal Chayv is kind of Mashkin? The Leva owns the Mashkin, not the Baal Chayv. So on here, I remember when I was in 10th grade, the first time I saw the Ksais, you know, the Ksais says that. Uh, that the whole Sheba Hakol is mis- some same Abba Mashkin. That's his Lashon. That the Leva is not chayv anything until 
the Machs of Lom Mishkono. Rabbi Sin the Ksais and handling the Ksais, and then the Yonah Salem brings Rabbi Chaim. Rabbi Chaim says that the Chayv is Munach the Mashkin, the Chayv looked in the Mashkin, the Chayv looked in the Mashkin. Years later, Rabbi Baruch Ber, we saw the Rabbi Baruch Ber, the Chayv looked in the Mashkin. What does that mean? It's very hard to understand. But in layman's terms, it means as follows. There's a difference between a shibud, a lean, and a mashkin, collateral. What the difference is as follows. That when I borrow money, when I am in debt, so there's a chayv, there's a debt, there's a liability on the gavra, on me. I have to pay it, right? And, but if there's a lien on something, that chayv, goes into the object, an object also. So there's the lien on the object, on my character, let's say, so that character has the chayv of the chayv, and therefore it can be paid from the character. But I own it. I own it totally. The malva, even though there's a lien on it, can use it for his own, it's not called a he surely can't use it for DNS, so he couldn't use it. And he has to be kind of, and so many other different things without getting involved. Masha Enkein, a mashkin, a mashkin is not the shot that there's a chayv on me and the chayv comes into the mashkin. The mashkin is a mixas piroin. It's, it's not about the chayv now. It's not about the owing it. It's about the payment. And what happens is, when I give the mashkin over to the malva, so the payment is already by the malva. He has a kinyan in it. I also have a kinyan in it. But he has a kinyan in it at this point. And it's called a mixas pirayim. The main nafkamina, there's so many nafkaminas. First of all, shmita is not mishametas in such a case. But the chayv licked by the malva. It's in the master. Besides that, Shemitah does not. So the Shah Melech talks about if it be an Esrig, it could be the Malva could use it. Because he has a key in the object already. Because the payment's by him. Or famous Shiloh, Rav Shimon, others talk about it. Uh, let's say uh, the, 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 the Malva is Chayiv on, on Gneva Veda. Perhaps that's the shadow of his chayv in Aronson, but it'd be the same idea. When is he chayv from Gnev Aveda, from the Shas Hamishuk, the Mashkin, is from the value then, or from the value of the Shas Aveda? If the chayv licked in the Mashkin, and the Mashkin has is by the Malva, it's owned over there, and it's not, at that point it's not a chayv on me. If I want it back, the chayv's on me. It goes back to me. So then, it's Mishas HaMashikha, and it's different, it's Chayv HaNonsa. The Chayv licked in the Mashkin. So what happens is, Kozman HaKadosh Baruch is holding the Mishkin, the Beis HaMikdash, as a Mashkin, the Chayv licked by HaKadosh Baruch I'm not carrying a Chayv. I'm not, if I want my Mashkin back, I gotta pay for it. But Kozman, that the mashkins by HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the chayv licked in the mashkin. And I'm not a Baal Chayv. That's the kapara. And I'm going to say him, Shal Yisrael. Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu took the mikdash as a mashkin. And that mashkin alleviates me from being a Baal Chayv. It's not on the Gavra now. It's a Baal Chayv. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu has the piroi by him. And that's mechaper. I walk as, almost as a knock, unless I, when I want that mashka back. I want it back, and I do want it back, because I'm a hechrechi. Because man, I don't have it back. The chayv licked by a Kaddish Baruch Hu. I think, in that, that kol dar, shlo nivna beis ha-mikdash b'yamav, is ke'ilo hechrivai, is considered as if it was destroyed, is that every Avera that we do in every generation, when we come more about Chayv, that Chayv is still licked in the Mashkin, in the Beis HaMikdash. 
and calls it's a mashkin every time, every generation. Hakadosh Baruch Hu Ke'il Nichrev. Hakadosh Baruch Hu took it back because the value of the mishkan is way greater than anything in high alma. Call a kesef, call a zov, call anything in this world, any possible chayv that we can have. The value of the mishkan is so much greater. That's what we're missing. Is so much greater. So the chayv in every generation licked in the mashkin. And that's why it's matovu alecha yakov. When it comes to mishkin, Shiloh wasn't a mashkin. Shiloh was not a mashkin. So there already, it's only be yeshuvan. It's mechaper with the, with the karbanus. Al the same shall yisrael. O mishkin asecha yisrael. But the beauty the power that's in the Beis HaMikdash, that's in the Mashkin, is that Afilu Berchobana, it's over there in every generation. It's by HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and the Chayv is by HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He's, he's carrying the Chayv for us. He's carrying the Chayv. And then the Hamas was on the eighth of Avani. And that's why it's called Yisrael, because it's a, such a higher level, the Berchobana. That the Hashros Hashchina is still there. That, that's the way, at least, that I understand it. So the Psutkim are Gewaltik, Chazal's Gewaltik. There's only one Kasha left. Is that there's a Halacha Mufareshas. Both in Parshas Yisaitse and Parshas Mishpatim. Im Chovol Tachvol Salmas Reyecha Adbay Hashem is Tishiven Uloi. There's a halacha that uh, Malva has to return the mashkin to the loiva, the one who's hired, if it's something which is a necessity and he needs it, like an article of clothing, sus yom b'yom, sus laila b'layla, a car, a pillow, a bed, whatever is necessary for life that the Malva has to return it to the Mashkin. To, to, sorry, to the Leva. The base Hamikdash is necessary. It's that crazy. That's why it was taken as a Mashkin. It's a, it's a Hechri for Klaiso. It's base Chayeno. What happened to the Halacha? What happened to the Halacha? Of returning the Mashkin to Klaiso for its use so we can use it. Good, the mashkin's yours. But return it that we could use it. It's halachim of Fereshus and Torah. I think the pshat is that we know that there's yud ches brachas in our tefillah, the Shman Esrei, that's why we call Shman Esrei. And the pshat is what does it connect with, what does it correspond to? We talk about the chul yeshab, other things, the halukas. Yushalmi who says also, is connected to the yud ches sibuyim in Parshish Mishkan Sheni. That's what it says. It says, uh, Kentasu, Kentasu. It says that 18 times. In Parshish Mishkan Sheni. What's Parshish Mishkan Sheni? So the first Shay, how you shall me say, it's Vayakel is the first Parsha, and Pekude is the second Parsha. And Pekude has Kentasu 18 times, and Shmon Esrus can negate that. On that, so the Maraponim in the back of Yerushalmi says that Mishkan Sheni means Parshish Pekude because it says Mishkan Shnei Pa'amen. Because it says Mishkan over there two times. And what happens in those two times? He says it alludes to, like Rashi brings the Chazal, that it was, became a Mashkan. On that the Maraponim says, Ula Achash in this Mashkan after it's a Mishkan, so how are we having our Shras Hashchina? Ein lono ela tefila b'mokin ha-karbin. Because it says in the Shalma Paramus Vaseinu. What happens is that HaKadosh Baruch Hu has the Mashkin and we have the tefila b'mokin of the, of the Mishkin and therefore the tefila is 18 brachas Klag Kenegad, corresponding to the 18 Ketasas of the, of the Mishnah. That's the Marapana. 
What's the depth of that? Is the depth of that is when a person's davening Shman Esrei, he's in the Mishkan. That's why it's the midst of Nechach Tnei Abayis. Nechach Beis HaMikdash. A person's in the Mishkan. See the Rambam. If the person's in the Mishkan, by the Hashra Sashina, when he davens, why? Because it became a mashkin by Kodesh Baruch Hu. What, is that, what does it mean that a Kodesh Baruch Hu returns the mashkin? He returns the mashkin to us every time we're mispala. We have that ability of the Hashra Sashkina. We don't have the Makkah, but we have the Hashra Sashkina. The Hashra Sashkina that was in the Makkah in the base of Mikdash. And that's, uh, Shulchan Aruch brings down that a, a person in Shemun Esrei, you know, if he's very focused, to reach a level of his Pashtus Hagashmis, his Gabris Kayach HaSichli, until he reaches Karav Lamayus HaNavuah. A person can carry the Shechina in. Mishachanti B'Saycha. HaKadosh Baruch returns the Mashkin. Many times a day, to many people, because that's the halacha. And we have a Shemana Esrei, that's B'mokim HaKarbonus, that's Mechaper. By the way, it's Mechaper even as Doinus, Rabbeinu Yonah writes, they stop sukkim. That's why we say Hashem Svasai Tifta. It's Mechaper not only on the Shkogus, it's Mechaper even on the Zdoinus. Our it's Shemana Esrei. So we, we get it back. We get it back on a daily basis, the Mashkin. But we don't get it back as the base of Mikdash until we pray the Chayv. But even the Chorbana, so it's being piled for us with the Shpashtas Hagashmi. Well, not everyone feels it. We only get it back if it's a Dova Hechrechi for the person. When a Mashkin is being taken from a Leva and he doesn't need it, or he could fill it with something else. He has two pillows. He has three pillows. It's not a dove hechrechi for his life. Then there's no halacha that the mava gives back the mashkin to the leva. But if it's his only pillow and he needs it, he can't live without it. It's his only dress. He can't go out without it. So then the halacha is to give it back. Kol man need it. What determines a person, Hashros Hashchina in him, what determines if a person's a Mishkan, a Beis HaMikdash, the last Mesilish Yisharim Chavav, says a person, there are people who become a Mishkan, a Mikdash, a Shulchan, a Mizbeach, sorry, he says. The person himself becomes a Mishkan. What determines that is how much of a Heshmet is it, and do I have a replacement or not? And, but not everybody, it's, uh, they feel that way, they live that way. That the Hashros Hashchina by them, that's our Avayda. To make the Hashros Hashchina Hechrechi. And we live in a very hard world, we'll finish with this. We live in a very hard world because there's a lot of replacement parts. It used to be that a person feels the void and have to deal with it. I feel I need, I, I have the void, I know I have the void. And now I have to fill it with the proper filling, obviously, with the real parts. But today, many times in Chinuch, unfortunately, we do it. When a person has a void, what we try to do is blind them from the void, or we fill it with replacement parts, with different things. You fill the void with other things. You know, uh, Say in davening, a person can daven with a nigan and it creates a hishtakikis, it creates a yearning, it creates a wanting. I feel the void and I want to fill it now with my connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I feel it. Or that same nigunim, or maybe it's different nigunim, could come in, oh, that filled the void. Now I feel good. I feel good. It's a totally different thing. It's the same thing with so many different things. People, we know that, in our world with anxiety, 
So many times we take the person away from the anxiety. That's great, he didn't do anything. So he's not in the matzah that the anxiety is going to come out. So he's blinded. You know, or the, you know, the different types of other things get involved. But sometimes, no, feel the void, feel the anxiety. Now fulfill it with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Fulfill it with Ruchni. Where it comes from. Emuna, Bitochen. In so many different areas of our lives, we're so many times avoiding the void. Instead of filling the void, feeling the void and fulfilling the void with what is missing. And that's Tefillah. Tefillah is a time that I connect to HaKadosh I feel the void, I feel there's no Mishkin. I'm coming into an Avaida and I'm, there's no Mishkin right now, Hashem. I can't be mocked of a carbon. I can't connect properly. I'm walking into a place there's no Hashra Sashkina yet. But what happens is, in my Tefillah, I'm making the Hashra Sashkina. Because it's a Hreifi for me. In my Tefillah, I'm bringing that back. And I become the Mishkin, I become the Mikdash, you know, I become the Mizbeach, as the Ramchal says. There's a Pasuk says that Tishivenu Lai, just to bring this out, Ki hik susa levada, hisim that what happens, this alone is his clothing. This alone is his garment for his skin. That's how we have to see the base of Mikdash. When we talk to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and we ask for Yerushalayim Yerchav, for any type of Ruchdi Dava, even Gashmi Dava, we have to realize Kihik Susa Levada. There's no choice, there's no other option. There's no Bechira, there's nothing else I could do. Kihik Susa Levada, I need it. He Simlosa Laira. And I have to ask HaKadosh Baruch Hu, what, what, what am I going to sleep with? What am I going to wear? What am I going to do? There's nothing. I'm lost. And now, it has to be returned. V'hoya ki Yitzhak Eli, and let's say the Malva doesn't return it. So what happens? The light is, screams out to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Why does he scream out to HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Because no, he can't function without it. V'hoya ki Yitzhak Eli. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu promises Vishamati, and I'll listen. Why? Ki chanun ani Because I am compassionate. Frek the Ramban. What does it need? Ki chanun ani Just say For her ki yitzhak alai vishamati. Zok the Ramban. Because a person, he, he, he's really coming to answer the Mesilus and Sharon's Kasha. Mesilus and Sharon, see, I mean, it's, before we get to, sorry. Ki chanunani. He says, what does it mean? Chanun is loshem matnis chinam. A person might think the Malvos, Malvos is going to say, uh, this person who I lent the money to and they gave me the symbol as a security, he's a Isha Enohogim. He has no mitzvahs, he has no relationship with the Kaddish Baruch Hu. He's empty. Maybe he's even a Russia, I don't know. Hashem's not listening to his feelers. So, I won't give it back. What is he going to do? Scream out to our Kaddish Baruch Hu? No, no. I won't give it back. I'll keep the security. On that, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, Ki chanun ani. I give a matnas chidam, compassion. Even if a person is not a hugger. Hashem says, I'm going to listen to that sa'aka. If the base of Mikdash is a mashkin by HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You don't have to be worthy in any way to ask for Hashra Sashkin. You don't have to ask. That's what I meant. Mrs. Shom asked the question. A person comes to Davin for Hashra Sashkin for the Zarf Beis of Mikdash, he asks the question, Me, I, who am I? My need soften. Who am I to ask for the base of Mikdash? That Kosh Baruch should listen to me? Because I say the Sechazena, the Yushalayim, because I want. Hashem's listening to me. I know what I am. I'm a Russian. I'm a this. I'm a this. I'm a this. I'm empty. I, I, I'm surely not a Isa Return of Shalaka. And Susan Shalom's Kasha. Ramban's answering it. 
Kihanani. You're right. But it's a mashkin. In a mashkin, you don't have to be a hogan for the mashkin to be returned. That's what Kalmas Abel Al Yushalayim is Zaikhiv Roya Bisim Khosa now. Because he has a Shwas Hashkina now. The Khosha Aino Misabal Al Yushalayim. Why is it not Misabu Yushalayim? He filled the void. He avoided the void. He's okay. It's not Afraiki. He can live without it. That ain't no zayche now of a roya b'nechemasa or b'simchasa. It's not talking about the binyan ha'asid. It's talking about the hashras hashkin of now. He's a zayche of a roya b'simchasa. He lives a different life. If he fills the void of it, and Hakadosh Baruch Hu returns the mashkin, our avodah, a tishah b'av, and every day of the year is to approach Hakadosh Baruch Hu in our shemun esrei. In, that, in all our tefillahs, in our lives, the way we live is that the base of Mikdash, Hashras, Hashkina, Kihik, Susa, Levada, that's the only thing we have. He simlas al It's a similar for, it's for, for my skin. Bamei Yishkov, the Yesa Kodesh Baruch Hu, there's no Hashras, Hashkina now. Bamei Yishkov, how am I sitting, how am I doing here, you say? And then HaKadosh Baruch Hu, she answer us with our tzorkas, Why? Ki chonon ani.